What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is episode 13 of Power Tech with your SCs. I'm one of your hosts, Justin McKean, here with Matt Childers today. Where we're going to be talking about exploring PowerSchool's assessment content. If you didn't know, PowerSchool actually has, builds, and offers its own item bank. We have over 100,000 items that are carefully created and aligned to meet state standards and web's depth of knowledge. So within these assessments, the really the goal of providing them is to save your staff so they can reclaim time that is better spent focused on developing personalized instruction versus creating assessments that might be uh, being used to identify where learning, learning gaps have uh, arised over the last several months. So when we talk about these different things, we wanted to give you guys a detailed look at just what the item bank is, talk about what type of information is out there, and then how that information can be used in our applications. Some of the facts that we've seen here over the last couple of months as we start to prepare for the 2021-2022 school year is that 91% of teachers agree that they need to collect new data going into next year so they can understand and evaluate student progress. So when you think about it from that idea, you know, we've leaned so much and so heavily on state tests. And yes, several several states did do their tests, uh, even here in the spring, even through, you know, this crazy year that we've had. But there is a huge trend in standards-based formative assessments to look at learning progress, learning gains, learning that's unfinished, however you are you know, addressing those conversations today. And why Matt's here is to talk about those different components. So just really quickly, Matt Childers, everyone, he's been on the show with us before. Matt, why don't you take a second and introduce yourself and I'll kick you the first question. Sounds great. Well, thanks, Justin. Hey, everybody. Great to be here again. So my name is Matt. I'm a solution strategy director here at PowerSchool for our classroom suite. So really, as you think about the teaching and learning cycle, you know, our conversation today around assessments um, are all topics that I work with here at PowerSchool. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. So as I was talking about, you know, there's this trend in standards based formative assessments. How is PowerSchool adjusted in our mindset as we continue to make sure we're offering up items and different test uh, scenarios that support teachers in this ever-changing world. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, you framed in the right way. One of the biggest really trends that we've seen is less of a reliance on, you know, state summative high stakes assessment and more that ongoing assessment just as a natural part of the teaching and learning cycle. So understanding where kids are and then allowing, you know, educators to personalize and differentiate instruction. So, you know, with that said, as we think about good assessments, well, good assessments are made of good items. So what I thought we could start with just to kind of level set with everyone is just to give you kind of a high level perspective of assessment content here at PowerSchool. So here at PowerSchool, we have an entire team whose sole focus is to author, to align, to build assessment content to support needs. And as you think about our offering, it is for the four core subjects grades K through 12. And as Justin alluded to, we have tens of thousands of items aligned to all 50 states. So, you know, I know we've got folks probably from all over the country and beyond watching. So happy to kind of share that specific information with you. But ultimately what that team does is really leverage industry best practices in terms of the creation of content, um, bias, sensitivity review, you know, the alignment to web's depth of knowledge, Bloom's taxonomy, the standards alignment, and that's something that they really take seriously in the sense that, again, this team is focused on hand aligning, ensuring that the different standards throughout the country, that our content is in alignment with it. And, you know, ultimately what that allows you to do is to then quickly be able to build assessments that are in alignment with your instruction and with your curriculum. So, you know, that's kind of the power of the item bank as opposed to, um, you know, something maybe that would be cookie cutter that would not be a good fit and then truly assess the learning. So what our hope is with that is that tool can save teachers, obviously, you know, curriculum leads as you build assessments to be able to have that high quality content. So less time, energy, focus on authoring content. I mean, Justin was a teacher just like me. And I, I think you would admit, you know, writing content is a skill, right? I mean, it, it truly is. It's not something that you can go into lightly. And then this also allows you, you know, as you think about the leadership on the line, to know that it's an apples to apples perspective. If you're able to you know, create these common formative assessments or benchmarks or whatever that assessment model looks like in your organization, as you're supporting your schools, your teachers, 
having that consistency to really identify. So again, where are we as a district? Where are we at certain specific skills and standards? Certain groups of students, just making sure that we're you know getting the support out there that we need. So that's really you know the perspective from the item bank, and then just shifting quickly. So that's one side of our offering. And then the other side, and this is really a response this year, um, you know, to just some of the needs around being able to quickly get a sense of where kids are, are now pre-made assessments. So these are really exciting. And just to, again, kind of level set with everyone, what this looks like, it's grades three through 11 for math and ELA. That's our initial focus. And these assessments fall into two categories or two buckets. The first are comprehensive. So what those are is there's two assessments per grade level, and they're really designed to cover the full curriculum of those courses. They're typically 20 to 40 questions, depending on subject and grade level. And then those two assessments follow the same summary. And essentially, there's a tool to use, whether they're an end of unit, um, whether they're you know starting off to kind of get a diagnostic of, of you know where the kids come back. But ultimately, they're a tool that you can use. The other side are our short formatives. And those, again, you're going to find hundreds of these. They're written to a specific standard. Now, these are much more nimble, three to five questions typically, to where you can give these and get a sense of just where students are with specific skills. So again, whether that's a bell ring or a ticket out the door, they can put immediate information in teachers' hands to just, you know, if, if that's a bell ringer, where are the kids' immediate access to maybe, you know, adjust how we go about the day. So those are really the, the assessment content offerings, item bank, pre-built assessments to, you know, kind of help you uh, hit the ground running for the coming school year. No, absolutely. And, you know, when we look at those components, when you talk about the content, just to reiterate what Matt was discussing, these, you know, as he made the joke, yeah, it is, it is incredibly hard to create content. I remember it was something I always struggled with. I would have much rather just given oral quizzes to my kids so I could just ask the questions I wanted and have conversations. When we talk about building these, these items or these banks, eventually, once you have the items, right, then you've got a bank. Um, when we create an item, it goes through subject matter expert review three different times before it's published. So, you know, we create the item, it goes through graphic design, making sure, that, you know, if, we, if there's anything technology enhanced that we can add, then it gets reviewed again. Then it goes to a copy editor, make sure again, you know, if it was me writing it, there'd be grammar mistakes or like little things throughout there that need to be tweaked. Then we review it one more time before it's published. So again, three reviews by different subject matter ex experts before it's finally finalized. And what I was really excited about is Matt already shared his excitement was these, these pre-made assessments. So I referenced earlier, remember 91% of teachers are saying that they need new ways to collect data as they come back from um, you know, experiencing virtual learning or things of that nature. They don't wanna go back to the old things that they've been relying on for so, so many years. So when we talk about those short formatives, that's just a beautiful way to do constant check-ins that are based on standards that are aligned to whatever the state is going to be configuring and looking for, um, you know, uh, showing of proficiency as they, you know, graduate that specific grade level. That information is going to be there. Three to five questions, 15-minute blurbs, where you're just getting in, getting some information, and then you can adjust your learning. Then there's those practice comprehensive assessments that are really more like that standardized test, right? But it has 20, 30, maybe 40 questions. It's going to take the kids more time. And again, we've really honed in on ELA and Algebra 1 and Geometry. Those are the three things. Again, the three core subjects that most states are focusing on, even those states that are doing end of course exams for kids in high school, where they've got to certify they're good in English, Algebra, and Geometry. Those are those three levels, and that's where we've got started. All of these things have been things we've been working on for a long time, but then obviously the scenario that we've gone through over the last year shed a light on that, and we brought all of that information to you. So as we kind of transition into talking about the other component of the item banks is social emotional learning. You know, as we've talked about, and I keep referencing, you know, the last year has been hard. It's been hard for me. Matt and I, you know, are good friends outside of just working together. It's been hard for our families. There's a lot of things happening emotionally in the world today and how we adjust. 
making sure that our kids, I have three girls, Matt has two, how do we make sure that they are feeling good about what they're doing in their learning environments? Are they still growing as quickly as they should academically? There have been a lot of challenges. Power School, again, also rose to the occasion here and created some castle-aligned social emotional learning surveys to really make sure that districts are getting the information that they need when they need it. So Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that offering and how, how we got to offer those? Yeah, absolutely. So again, you know, as we think about just where we are right now, I think it's just underscored more than ever, just the need to, to support the whole child. Obviously the academics are, are critical. We want our students to make those gains and succeed. But if they're not supported or they're not feeling comfortable in other areas where they may need support, they're not going to really be able to achieve their potential there. So exactly as Justin just outlined. So an additional offering, and for this, I just want to be clear, any of you listening to this who are using Performance Matters today, which is, of course, the delivery, these are available at no additional cost, the Castle Aligned surveys. So I, I just want to make sure that that's clear. It's something that, again, just a response this year that we wanted to make available. So what these are is their social emotional learning surveys, and they allow students to self-report essentially. So just like you can use Performance Matters for academic areas, like we just talked about, you can also deliver these surveys, these student response surveys, and they're aligned to the Castle standards. So things like you know relationship skills, self-awareness, those different aspects. And they're able to self-report in a very familiar place where they're already taking academic, um, academic um, assessments. And then that can just be an additional area to know, you know, where can we support our students better? Is this having an impact on student learning? Are we seeing issues across the board at our school that we can also support our staff with in terms of professional development and in terms of the actual structure? So we've got a couple of surveys. One is a short form, which is 17 questions. One is a long form with 40 questions, as well as an item bank of over 100 items that you can you know, ultimately use as you see fit. And what we've you know, it's, it's interesting as well, like I've even seen talking with some districts where even at the start of an assessment, an academic assessment might put one or two SEL aligned items in you know, zero weight, so it's not to count against the kids, but allow the kids to kind of you know, communicate where, how they're feeling at that moment. So just something we're really excited about. Again, it hits home for us. Um, you know, I have two daughters this year. Um, you know, there's a lot of disruption. So just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. So obviously the academics are focused, but so too are the social emotional needs of kids. And this can allow you to monitor that and better support students. Yeah, absolutely. And when we look at the SEL component, you know, the next transition is we've talked about getting these assessments out and then having these predefined content areas for you. Again, the one thing I want to highlight is that Matt, there, is, there are 100 questions. So it's not like what you see is what you get. You can create and design and mold them to fit your specific needs. So there's flexibility and configurability there. And one of the things that Matt hit on that I think is incredibly powerful is that these assessments are delivered in the same platform that they're used to taking other, other assessments. So they're not going somewhere else, which is how many districts brought in social emotional learning over the last years, but well, which company offers it, I'm gonna go add them to my repertoire and then our kids are going somewhere else. We're keeping everything under the same platform. And as Matt and I talked about in episode nine, just a couple of months ago, how performance matters is really folded into the unified classroom. So that we're delivering things from one location, one place for both your teachers and your students to be able to create the content and then access and take those assessments and then review them. So Matt, talk a little bit about, you know, we've already hit it once. So if you haven't, go back, episode nine, check it out. We're gonna go through everything in detail, but let's just reiterate again, how this has all come together under the Unified Classroom. Yeah, absolutely. So the Unified Classroom 2021, we're, we're really excited about because you know, ultimately, as we've kind of framed this whole conversation, this is assessment for learning, right? It's not, assessment's not the be all end all. We want this just to be an organic and natural part of just instruction, that teaching and learning process. So one of the things that you're gonna see is really the coming together of our classroom solutions. As you think about performance matters, which is you know, comprehensive assessment, advanced reporting, Schoology learning, right? The leading K-12 learning management system where you know, really the hub of the day-to-day -day teaching special programs, which again, supporting those students with special needs, and then optionally, but you know, definitely optimally, the power school student information system. And what you're seeing is really the blurring of the lines of these types of systems to where 
again, as, as we've, you know, students, teachers become much more comfortable curating, managing the content in a learning man management system. Now, being able to deliver a performance matters assessment right as a Schoology resources. So there's less stopping and starting. Again, it's just a natural part of that teaching and learning cycle. So a lot of the feedback we've gotten is it just makes it more realistic to fit this in, you know, kind of the the day-to-day the -day of a teacher um, to where, again, you're not having to stop one thing to start another, just able to deliver it right in those systems that you're already using. And then again, if you just kind of think about it, well, the, I mean, we've talked about assessments, but the only reason we give them is to know where kids are, right? So you have access to the reports, standards aligned, by student, by by staff member, depending, and then, okay, taking that, applying that, what resources are they using in Schoology that we can share? Where can we support them in professional learning? So really just that interconnectedness of, you know, really having um, that single connected system to support and simplify the teaching and learning cycle. So great points, uh, Matt. And when you talk about, you know, maybe you're a district leader that's on the line. And, and as we've done a lot of surveying over the last couple of months, we're finding that 60% of district leaders are unsure of how to make up for lost instructional time. So we've talked about a couple of different components that really hit that right on the head the most. Matt just talked about the unified classroom, bringing multiple applications together all in one location so that students and teachers are really having the opportunity to interact with, with different applications, but from one experience so that they can continue to, you know, modify and look for student uh, gaps in learning. If we're talking about special needs, making sure that we're meeting all the accommodations. We're talking about the LMS. It's really become the hub of learning over the last year and will probably carry on moving forward. So bringing all those aspects together from one location is critical. The other side of that was the other statistic I gave earlier. 91% of teachers are kind of scrambling to well, how do we want to address this? And as Matt's talked about, we're really looking and transitioning into standards-based formative assessments that can be given a little bit more nimbly, or I just made up a word, I think. We're a little more nimble, right, where we can do things on the fly, and that's where the content that we're offering and creating and curating can be there to support you. So we're making sure, again, that you have the ability to make up for lost instructional time by using the tools that we offer within our applications. Then as we continue to enhance the inter interoperability between them, more and more things are going to be able to happen and occur right from within one single source or one single place. So as we look to wrap up the show again, we were talking about the PowerSchool Item Bank and PowerSchool Assessments, how we have all this information, over 100,000 items that are there for you to use. We talked about those items. Yes, they are part of Performance Matters. If you want to use the item bank, please talk to your account executive. And they'll be able to give you some information there. If you are a Performance, Matter, Performance Matters user today, reminder that if you want the SEL content, that is offered to you free of charge. So if you do not have it and are not using it, you can get that today, right now, free of charge. The item bank with all the content for learning and formative assessments, yes, there are some fees associated there, and you just want to check in to get those things incorporated. So, Matt, as always, man, great catching up with you. Thank you so much for joining the show. Anything before I wrap up? No, just appreciate everyone's time. And I guess this is kind of the final note I'll make is, you know, this this content we're talking about is a living, breathing thing, right? There's quarter, quarterly releases. So something that we're really excited about um, and happy to take feedback um, on from, from, you know, different users out there. So thanks everyone for your time. Awesome. So, hey, episode 13, talking about exploring power school assessment content. If you have any questions, please make sure, feel free to reach out to Matt and I. You can ping us here on YouTube. You can reach us on social media, whatever the case may be. Let us know what you're thinking. For those of you that check in the show, make sure you smash that subscribe button. So my kids would tell me to say if uh, they were making their YouTube videos so that you can see when content's coming out from us. We're trying to push it out twice a month. Got a little lazy on my end in May. We had some crazy things happening at work, but we're going to get back on it over the next couple of months. Please let us know what you think, topics you want us to hit on. We love having you on and, and checking out what's happening with PowerSchool. So until next time, stay safe, and we'll talk to you then. See ya.